Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Man, I wish it was still called Anthology. Anyway, before I get into the review, I'd like to say three things. First, if I make this shot, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If I don't, I'll be content with a like. I'll take a like. Secondly, I want to say a major spoiler alert for Rogue One, a Star Wars story, so consider yourselves warned. Thirdly, I want this to be a discussion on this really good movie. So, if you have anything to say about Rogue One, or anything to say about any of the points that I make, please say that in the comment section down below, and if you would like to request a movie for me to review in the future, say that also in the comment section down below. Let's do this thing. So Rogue One, this movie came out, what, three, four weeks ago? I've seen it multiple times. I ain't gonna say I'm an expert, but I love Star Wars. So, let's do this thing. First thoughts, first thoughts, the characters in this movie are awesome. L I, let me, Felicity Jones, let me begin with her. Jin Erso amazing character I like that it started out with the cold open still wish that there was a crawl in there somewhere but that cold open with Orson Krennic um, Ben Mendelsohn playing Orson Krennic Mads Mikkelsen playing Galen Erso and the mother uh, Lyra I believe is her name oh the cold open was so good Ben Mendelsohn and Mads Mikkelsen, their um, chemistry in that cold open was so amazing. Mads Mikkelsen, so, so very good as far as trying to lie, but not really doing it convincingly about his his uh, wife being dead. And Mads Mikkelsen, or, and, uh, sorry, Ben Mendelsohn just, fe I, f I felt like he was in control of that that scene the entire time. Felicity Jones is Jin Erso, and the younger Erso, I will say, sometimes they get actors that do not look like um, their older selves, as when, if they do things like start out when they're young and, and then skip to when they're older, the young actor looked perfect for playing a young Felicity Jones. Diego Luna as Cassian Andor, really cool, love, love all everything that he did with it love that they got some diversity in there also Alan Tudyk as K2SO arguably better than R2D2 and C3PO put together I mean this droid was awesome he was funny when when Cassian Andor uh, that character isn't so funny Jyn Erso isn't so funny so K2 Always was right there with the right lines at the right time. Loved it. Donnie Yen as Chirrut Imwe, my favorite character. Loved him when he was asking Jin for her necklace. When he said, uh, trade that necklace for a glimpse into the f your future. I was like, dude wants to make a lightsaber because you need a kyber crystal, which was in that necklace, to make a lightsaber. I was like, man, Jin, you should have given it to him. You might have stood a chance. Anyway. Next, uh, Wen Jiang as Baz, his uh, Chirrut's friend, so good, so good, loved his character design, how he had his crazy futuristic looking weapon with like the, the, the ammo clip that went to his backpack, love, love the character design in this movie. The character design in this movie and in pretty much all Star Wars movies is awesome, but this movie just nailed it with every single character. Ben Mendelsohn, as I said, before Orson Krennic, amazing, amazing. Forrest Whitaker, some people say he's over the top, not me. I loved him, I thought he was perfect. I've seen the Clone Wars uh, episodes where he is, or where that character is in the Clone Wars episodes, I've seen those. 
yeah, Saw, Gu- uh, Saw Guerrera, that character, Forrest Whitaker played him like he should be. Riz Ahmed, Riz Ahmed as Bodhi Rook, uh, the, the, the cargo pilot, really enjoyed him, really enjoyed him. Few things that that really, really liked when he was like, yeah, I want to fight. He didn't fight. Uh, when they were on Scarif, or, or before they were on Scarif, when they were at uh, Yavin 4, and he was like, yeah, I want to fight too. Yeah, well, you you didn't even shoot a blaster. I mean, you could have picked up a blaster and shot. Whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Still love the movie. Mads Mikkelsen as Galen Erso didn't have a lot to do in the movie, but did what he did have very, very well. Jimmy Smits, Bail Organa, loved it. Heart sunk a little bit when he said he had to go back to Alderaan and tell his people that there was no peace because I know that Alderaan did not have a long life after that. Sorry, Jimmy Smits. Love the character. Hearts, like I said, heart sunk when he said that. The world building in this movie, so, so cool. One of the things that um, Episode 7 could have done a little bit better was the world building, but this movie, when we were on Jetta, I was like, okay, yeah. They're, they're all kind of wearing heavy clothes, so maybe it was like a colder desert. I'm not sure about that, but I loved Loved that world building. Loved seeing that city of Jeddah city. It was it was really cool. And that cold open that um, that planet that they were on. I'm not quite sure what it what it's called, but that cult that that planet totally different than any other planet we had seen in Star Wars. Extremely extremely good job as far as world building. Loved every single world we went to. Edu. Totally new planet, stormy planet. Oh, I was reminded of one planet from um, the extended universe uh, that Revan visited. I was like, yes, they're taking things from legends and kind of tweaking them and making them fit where they want to. Love this world building. Loved every planet. Thought every planet was unique. And Scarif, I wanna, I wanna take a vacation to Scarif. Looks like the looks like Hawaii to me I want to go there best thing about this movie other than the Darth Vader scene you know the one I'm talking about other than that one Orson Krennic I thought Ben Mendelsohn as this character was so so good I loved every scene that he was in I loved the power play that was happening between him and Tarkin. I love the the way he commanded that opening scene, like I said before. I extremely, extremely love the way he played off of Darth Vader in that scene where they meet and it's like he knows that Darth Vader, you know, he he wants to be in league with the Emperor, okay? And he knows that Darth Vader is that link to the Emperor. And yet, he plays it in such a way where he is this close to being afraid of Darth Vader. And I loved it that he wasn't like a cowering child just asking Darth Vader for help. He was... He felt like he should have been on the same level as Darth Vader, but he knew that he wasn't. And I loved... The way he played the that. ending of this movie I really really liked that they had the guts and the the foresight to kill every single of our main characters because obviously they are not there in episode 4 so they have they have to be gone going into this movie I thought I, I really hoped, I really hoped that Darth Vader would kill one, some, I any of them, honestly, any of them, I would have been fine with him force choking or slashing down, but I really liked that they all died, not at the hands of Vader, yet we still got a brilliant scene with Vader 
using the force, using his lightsaber. I mean, I was blown away when when we were back on that ship, the 10 to 4, and then it kind of it went out to the it went through, you know, the docking bay to the other ship. I was like, "Okay, we we got to have something with Vader. We can't just have some scene and especially when his when uh, the his ship comes out of hyperspace, I was like, "Oh yes, 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 please." And then when he said, "We're we got let's have a uh, a boarding party," I was like, "Okay, okay, keep going, keep going, keep following Vader." And it did such it did this movie. Gareth Edwards as the director did such an amazing job, and he killed all of our characters off. And then right after that, had a amazing scene with Vader destroying these rebels and it made it seem like yes all of our characters died but we still had a happy ending because we got an amazing scene with Vader doing what Vader does and I was like wow that is so cool that you could take make a bad guy the baddest bad guy in this movie have him kill a bunch of heroes and we still love we still love it I was I was amazed at how awesome that scene was my verdict is simple blu-ray this film blu-ray 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 you want this in between episode 3 if you're a prequel person which I'm not and episode 4 you want this in that slot you push those two aside saying we got a new amazing chapter of Star Wars to put there and I was like yes I'm gonna blu-ray this we ha I have the blu-ray for episode 7 I have the original trilogy unfortunately I do not have the blu-ray for um, the despecialized editions but I do have the despecialized editions you can't put those on blu-rays unfortunately but I do have the despecialized editions so this will definitely be coming to my house once it comes out on blu-ray Definitely blu-ray this if when you do your marathons You're going to want to have this one right in front of episode 4 because it is that good and it deserves to be there Absolutely buy this so if you have any thoughts about anything on Rogue One a Star Wars story say it in the comments section down below if you disagree with me say it in the comments section down below if you like this movie give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it Give it the other one Thank you for watching this review of Rogue One.